When I stop and think about it, I think maybe the two questions that I have been asked in my life more than any other, just in casual conversation, people talking, they'll either ask me, how tall are you? Or they'll ask me, are you crazy? And the answer to the first question is 6'3". And the answer to the second question is, well, duh. Are you crazy? Are you? Because maybe you need to be. If you are going to be a follower of Jesus, this gospel today, turn the other cheek, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Offer no resistance to injury. A man by the name of Romano Gardini once said, if you try to live the Sermon on the Mount without faith, you would be insane. What Jesus asks of us in order to truly find the kingdom for the average person, they would look at that and say, it's impossible. No way. Maybe even for us as Christians that are familiar with the message of Jesus, with this Sermon on the Mount, where he takes so many of the Jewish laws. You have heard it said, whatever, and he redefines them. But I say to you, go deeper. Live from the heart. We look at those, and we might still think, Jesus asked the impossible of us. Anybody who thinks they can do that must be crazy. If you tried to live the Sermon on the Mount without faith, you would be insane. And yet, Jesus didn't back down from those teachings. He lived them. And he said, follow me. How can we possibly do that? How can we do the impossible? How can we be perfect? You can't. There's the old line, well, I heard it said that practice makes perfect, but then I also heard the statement that nobody's perfect, so I quit practicing. Do we just take what he has said and write it off and say, well, that's, that's beyond me. I'll follow you. Jesus, I'll, I'll go to church, I'll try to be a good person, but all this forgiveness stuff, all this not hating stuff, I have to love my neighbor, I have to love my enemy. Come on, Lord, who do I get to hate? Jesus, it's like you're telling me that I don't have the right to hate anybody. And Jesus goes, hello.
but I want to, but I need to. But I'm a good person. And there are bad people out there. And that gives me the right to judge them, to hate them. Even though what I'm doing inside is I'm also telling myself, in doing that, I'm better than them. So how do we live this very, very difficult demand or this impossibility? Corey Ten Boom was a survivor of a Nazi concentration camp. After the war, she toured, she toured Europe giving talks, urging rival nations to forgive one another. One night, after a talk in Munich, a man came up and extended his hand in a gesture of reconciliation. He had been one of the most hated guards in the camp where she'd been. She couldn't take his hand. She prayed, Jesus, help me. I can't forgive him. Instantly, some higher power helped her to take his hand in forgiveness. That night, Corey learned a great truth. The same Jesus who taught us to love our enemies empowers us to do it. All we need to do is ask for the power. With Lent this year coming up, deep inside, we know what we have to face in ourselves. And if we don't, with a little reflection, a little honesty, we'll come to that realization. The help will be there if we truly want it. If we are willing to ask for it. Lent is a time when in whatever we do, the purpose of it should be that we are trying to know our Lord better. We can't do that by ourselves. No matter how independent we might think we are, Jesus says, how can you get to know me if I don't help you, if I'm not there with you. Can I forgive this person in my life? I don't think so. Am I willing to ask God for the strength to help me try? There's Lent right there. Be perfect. We never will. But strive to be perfect. Want to be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Ah. That's a different matter. 
So for us during Lent, maybe what it's all about is a question of our willingness. All we need to do is ask for the power.